All right, I'm now recording. All right, sounds good. So welcome to the June 3rd, 2020 meeting of the Design Review and Tree Board. We have uh, design one design re review item and I think some minutes to approve for our previous tree boards. Um, just a quick notice, meeting is being conducted by utilizing teleconferencing electronic means consistent with the state of California executive order in 2920, dated March 17, 2020, regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. Live stream of the meeting will be uploaded to the city website as soon as possible after this meeting. Members of the public wishing to speak to the DRB on any, any item listed on the agenda may do so during the discussion time. We'll be doing those um, during Zoom. And if you uh, any appropriate language, offensive or threatening sort of stuff, you will be removed from the meeting. And if you emailed public comments, these comments will be summarized for the record. Um, and that's about it. So moving on to our regular agenda. Let's zoom in on this thing so I can see where we are. So, um, First, first up, a little bit of business here, roll call. Okay. Roll. Sure. Um, Chair Luthen? Here. Uh, Vice Chair Langbird? Here. Uh, member uh, Level? Here. And we do have a few members, uh, both uh, member Carrie Bush and member uh, Greg Beal are recused from this item due to their proximity of uh, property they own uh, to the application. Um, so they are excused from the meeting and uh, member Ron Harry is um, out of town. So he's also excused. All right. Thank you for that. I think and and just to a note on that, we do need a quorum, which is three members, to uh, approve an application or deny an application. So, um, with that, we do have a quorum for this meeting, but any votes would need to be unanimous. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, next thing is a review of minutes. We have some minutes from a May sixth meeting. Anybody have any comments on those minutes? They looked fine to me. I had a, question. I had a question. Or do you want to say something, Carrie? Uh, I was going to say the we did not catch who uh, made the motion and seconded the April fifteenth minute. So I don't know if anyone on the board remembers. That would be very helpful. Otherwise, we may need to put those minutes back on the agenda just to do that. Or you could approve them um, today as well to to make sure that that is. Um, done correctly. What were the topic on the April 15 meeting? That was the Burnett Street Design Review 6950 downtown. No. Oh, okay. April 15th, but is that right? Are we? April 15th, I believe, was the two tree, re tree yeah. removal permits. Yeah, right. The uh, one at the Burbank Housing site mm -hmm. at 699 Gravenstein and the oh, okay. uh, condos on Valley View. Yeah. So that's the one you're asking who approved and who seconded. Correct. Yeah. I don't remember. I wasn't there. So I don't know. But I'm happy to approve them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did look at them. <laughs> yeah, I don't recall either. Okay. And unfortunately, the recording did not stop, uh, start at the uh, the right time. So uh, we do not have that. So I would ask if. Um, Actually, if we don't have a quorum of people who were there, Christine, if you're not comfortable uh, voting on the minutes, then uh, we can table that to the next meeting. Yeah, or we can we actually- should, wasn't there, yeah. Okay, we'll so table approval of these minutes, uh, of that portion of it to the next meeting. Um, and uh, Rebecca, if you can ask the other members if they know, or if they recall if they motioned or seconded, that'd be great. Okay. Sounds good. And so, Chair uh, Luthen, if you want to just continue this whole item, approval of minutes until that's clarified to the next meeting, that's probably the best, easiest way to handle that. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. And then okay. we will move on to uh, planning department update on matters of general interest. Sure, a few items. Um, 
let's see, uh, the various reports that have gone to city council that may be of interest. Uh, we did present, um, and I don't recall if I mentioned this at the last meeting, the annual level of service report to the city council. Um, and uh, that will also be on the planning commission's agenda on this upcoming Tuesday. Um, and so that report is available online. Um, we are within all the parameters of our general plan um, requirements. Um, so there wasn't too much discussion on that item. Um, we do, city council did authorize and we have a couple of curbside um, and we uh, drop off pick up parking spaces, which are basically like 10 minute loading zones um, in the downtown area for people who are doing pickup and drop off. Um, and additionally, last night, um, we presented an item which was approved by city council to allow um, uh, businesses, uh, and this is obviously focused on restaurants, to be able to set up outdoor dining in their private parking lots up to 25% um, does not require any sort of review. Um, so any restaurants who have a private parking lot can use, uh, can cordon off 25% or two spaces automatically to expand outdoor seating. Um, if they want to go up to 50% or four spaces, we do require um, some staff level review just to make sure that there, there's a balance, especially on um, like the South Point Shopping Center, which has three or four restaurants and making sure that um, it's all balanced out. Um, and then additionally, we do have um, uh, authorization to do some expedited um, permitting for use of sidewalks and potentially um, public parking spaces um, that's city right of way. Um, for the Caltrans side of it, we have um, uh, our engineering manager is working with Caltrans to see if we can set up some temporary parklets um, on the Caltrans right of ways. And uh, I know Vice Chair uh, Langberg had uh, signed a letter in support of that, so thank you. Um, that was well received by council and approved unanimously. And um, we're hoping that the parklet is obviously in Caltrans hands. So. Um, uh, that will be interesting. Um, the next agenda item for City Council will have, um, and just to let people know, um, I, I don't think it's the first time it's come around, but at, uh, outside of our town, but at Yano and Sebastopol Road, mm -hmm. the address is 5300 Sebastopol Road. Um, there is proposed to be a gas station, car wash, and RV storage site at that. Um, and that item, um, we are uh, submitting to council for their review and any comments they want to send. They have sent comments in the past opposing the project. Um, that is, uh, there is a CEQA uh, proposed mitigated negative declaration out for that right now. Uh, it's obviously in a floodplain and next to the bike trail and um, at a pretty busy intersection, so there's some concerns there. Uh, in addition to the new gas stations, greenhouse gas emission concerns. Uh, so I did want to let uh, folks know about that, both at the City Council, but also coming up on, uh, I believe, uh, beginning of July on the county's um, design uh, meeting calendar. Um, and then the last but not least, um, I did receive a Nixle alert that Earlier today, there was a peaceful protest in downtown. The PD uh, uh, responded to it by closing the intersection at 116 and 12, uh, basically Main Street and uh, Main Street <laughs> for nine minutes so the activists could have um, a, a moment of silence there and then reopen it peacefully. And I'm happy to answer your questions on any other topics. I know there's a lot going on in the world right now. <laughs> I just want to ask about the parklets that uh, it sounded from before that Caltrans was actually open to this idea. Is that, I thought you said that before. Obviously, it has, still has to go through any review. But. Yeah, so my understanding, and if anyone has any pull with Caltrans on this, um, I'd be happy to know. Um, the person who is the sort of the contact, our local contacts basically said that it is two or three steps up the org chart from him. So it's out of his control. Um, and he um, sort of politely suggested that getting electeds involved would not be uh, a miss. So, you know, it's, it's ideally if the governor um, could do something about it at the state level to provide guidance, that would um, go a long way. Um, so if anyone happens to know, 
Mr. Newsom or anyone up there or any of the um, state representatives, <laughs> uh, that would certainly be helpful. Well, Mike McGuire would be the one to ask, I would think. Like, uh, you know, he knows. Right, our, right. Uh, we have our local representatives too. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Jared Huffman as well. And Mike McGuire, I think, is getting pretty high up in the uh, hierarchy there, I think. So um, I'd suggest reaching out to him. Yeah, yeah it's a great right. thing downtown. Yeah, and I did um, talk with the, there's probably going to be an article at least about the um, parking in the Sonoma West uh, tomorrow. And um, she, she shared a great picture of the park that was done in Sebastopol a while back. Um, so uh, I think she's going to probably use that in her uh, in her story. So we may see Lars and a few other DRB members on um, in the paper soon. Nice. Yeah. And I'd, I'd also just like to to commend the city. I think the communication during pandemic um, events here have been the communication has been great and um, it's nice to see the proactive approach to parklets and things like that. And so I, I, I really appreciate that. And I think the city is doing a great job. So yeah, you're here. Yeah. Thanks. And uh, I will say that we had a, a council member gurney um, wanted to explore closing streets for slow streets. Um, and I did meet with um, them, uh, her and uh, Mary Slater in the guise of the uh, bicycle and pedestrian sub council subcommittee um, and we didn't feel it was necessary and we couldn't quite identify a street right now but actually identified it as a potential for next summer um, when there might be more encouraging of gathering going on. I think the general sense was is that um, Sebastopudlians already walked down the middle of the street on a regular basis. <laughs> 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 Right. <laughs> Mine too. My street too. <laughs> Sounds good. That's that's good. It's good to be proactive. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Let's see. Um, comments from the public regarding items not on our agenda. Did we receive any? any I have not. Alan? Okay. Nobody Looks like any? none. Okay. Statement of conflicts of interest. I think we've already discussed, discussed that during the call, but we had a couple conflicts. So let's move right into our first um, first item on our agenda, only item on our agenda. All right, thank you for that. So the project before us is um, requesting a sign review and sign exception to permit the already installed sign located along the top of the building at, sorry, 6957 Sebastopol Road. Um, the proposed sign is constructed of reclaimed lumber and has bold gold letters that read Jaspers. The background of the sign is black to match the building color and the trim around the sign is painted gold once again to match the trim on the building. The sign will be illuminated by the existing gooseneck lights that are at the top of the building which were approved as part of a sign permit approved by the board in 1982. So part of the reason why the sign is here before the board today is that it requires a sign exception as the sign exceeds the uh, 25 square foot size limit for this particular building. And in doing so, um, as the sign is also over 25 square feet, it's also required to be heard or reviewed by the design review board. So it's kind of two parts. It's the size of the sign being over the size sign limit for this for the size of this building, and also for an exception as it's exceeding the allow the sign allowance for the building. Um, so the purpose of the of a sign exception is to allow flexibility to the sign regulations while still fulfilling the purpose of the regulations. In order to be granted an exception, any one of the following findings is required to be met. A, the exception will allow a unique sign of exceptional design or style that will enhance the area or building, or that will be a visible landmark. Or B, the exception will allow a sign that is more consistent with the architecture and development of the site or site context or is appropriate given the nature of the business, or C, the granting of the exception will not constitute the granting of a special privilege inconsistent with the sign limitations upon other properties in the same vicinity and district. So one thing I do want to reiterate again is that those all end in or, which means it's just that one finding needs to be, one finding needs to be met. It's not and for each and every finding would, need, would be needed to be met. 
So the applicant had had submitted their own findings um, for finding A and B, which are which are summarized in the staff report and provided and as provided by the applicant as an attachment to the report. Overall, staff is supportive of the applicant's finding A as presented, as the sign is designed to enhance the building. The sign appears to have been designed as part of the building by making the background the same color of the building and utilizing the same gold trim elements that are on the building. Um, and in doing so, they, the sign and the building tend to mutually enhance each other or complement each other. Um, in addition, the sign is building on top of the prior use, um, Jasper's or Ferrell's, which had been there for 38 years, and in a sense is trying to almost use this as landmarking this location. So, um, however, I do want to note that staff does have several concerns with supporting the exception. Um, one, the applicant had, the applicant requested the exception to approve an already built and installed sign, which, you know, during the process, it could have been reduced to 1.6, you know, could have been reduced to be compliant. And uh, two, approval of the sign exception could potentially create a precedent. Um, if the board finds the design itself is worthy of an exception due to its design, this should be clearly stated as so. So given these concerns and the subjectivity of the sign exception findings, you know, I did grapple with a recommendation. However, given that the sign has been designed specifically, you know, has been designed essentially around this building and to fit it and complement it. Um, so it's matching the exterior improvements done to the building, implements design elements from the building, such as the gold trim and the black background. And also by utilizing that same color as the building, it, the sign essentially blends in with the building a little bit, the areas around the gold trim, around the uh, lettering. And since so it kind of blends in a little bit, making the sign appear less large. And um, generally speaking, staff recommends approval of the sign exception and sign permit as it enhances the building. Um, staff has also recommended a conditional approval um, restricting the lighting to 2700 kelvins to match the street lights and has been required for other recent projects. So that would conclude staff's report and if you have any questions of me, I'm happy to answer them. And uh, also, Carrie, sorry, I don't think I'm a co-host so I can't mute and unmute at this time. So, okay, I've just made you a co-host, and and thank you all. We were getting some background noise, so we have uh, we muted everyone during the presentation. But please feel free to un unmute yourself now. Sounds good. Thank you very much, Carrie. Um, any questions for staff? And I'm going to unmute Christine. Oh, there we go. I have a question. Yes. Go ahead, Lars. Uh, so, um, did the applicant put up the sign? and then ask for a sign permit or an exception, or did somebody flag him, so to speak, and say, that sign's too big, and turn him in? Just curious. So I believe the applicant submitted back in September, and uh, the application was deemed incomplete in early October, and then resubmitted in late November. And I believe the sign was installed sometime between November and December. So the application was already in, and then during that time, it was involved, and I think that than I can. So the application was submitted, and it's only is it it's only now getting it to us because of schedule, or it's coming to us now because of the issue of the signs. So it's kind of a kind of a brief history of the application process and what took so long to get here. So the application was submitted in early September. It was officially in the city in early October. It was resubmitted in on uh, November 25th and subsequently deemed on uh, December 4th. And then it was once again resubmitted or formally resubmitted with the findings on February. And then we had initially scheduled the application on March 10th for the April 15th hearing, but then the and shelter in place orders came into effect and everything kind of got pushed back and some of the other applications took that over. Okay. And then I, we tried to schedule it for the day, so issues came up and we're here today. Thank you. All right, uh, Christine, any questions of staff? No, I don't have any, thanks. 
All right, thank you very much. I see that our applicant is here. Um, would you like to say a few words? Uh, yeah, I appreciate it. I'm Damien Clopton, also known as the applicant. Um, yeah, we um, we are a, a local I live in Sebastopol, and so does my uh, fiance and business partner. Um, so we we did want to continue to name it uh, Jasper's when we had, when we had the opportunity, or back to Jasper's for all the reasons uh, that Alan mentioned. Um, but really, just the hecticness of that sign process was we had a friend and a local person here design the sign, and they were the ones that um, had their name on the original sign application that went in. That sign is now actually in our back patio because it just didn't, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't what we wanted to put on the front of the building for a couple of reasons. Um, and because of that, with an opening date of, I believe, the 27th of November, we had to kind of panic and put together another sign, which was kind of expensive and beautiful and same thing a local father-son team that put it together for us um, but that was the reason for the reapplication of the sign and why it went up so quick um, for opening up the business so it wasn't um uh it certainly wasn't my intention to have to resubmit for a sign application or have to pay for two signs but that's the, the story on my side of why the sign going up was so rocky initially and then um and then, yeah, you know, things have changed a lot since then. So, um, uh, you know, we're all, um, we're all hoping that this goes well. It was obviously on a personal level, it's a significant cost and investment and, and we had all the best intentions of, of making an improvement on the building and, and hoping that it, it will look as a landmark and, and not having, we do have a logo and it's nowhere on the building because we didn't want to, um, we wanted to make it look, uh, classy and appropriate and not um, put our designs all over it. You can see that stuff when you come inside. Um, but with all that being said, our, our big problem right now in the future is renegotiating our lease to figure out what we can do and, and try and, you know, we're not on the short list of businesses opening anytime soon. So uh, in all honesty, we hope that this hearing goes our way and you guys will grant an exemption and, and we would certainly appreciate that. And we hope to continue to be a part of the community. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it's going to be a hard road ahead re regardless of the outcome of this. So I appreciate the hearing and, and finally getting to, to do the time and, um, and I hope we can stay a part of the town. Great. Thank you very much. I, I hope you can too. It's, uh, some strange times. Yeah, indeed. Any questions for our applicant? Christine, any questions? No, no questions. Lars, any questions? No questions, no. No questions either. I think that's a fairly straightforward issue. Yeah. Um, so thank you again for saying a few words. It's great to have a better understanding of uh, kind of how we got here and what's going on. So we appreciate that. So um, bring it back to the, the board for discussion. Um, Christine, do you have any comments? Um, I would like to say that um, I think the sign uh, can be approved based on item number one from Alan's list. And I think it has a, a historic precedent that building's always been Jasper's. And, uh, you know, I feel that, you know, anything we can do to get the applicant moving forward, given the circumstances, is what we should and must do. So I, I would just like to approve it as is with the increased size. And I think item number one on Alan's list justifies doing that. So. I agree. Sounds good. Lars, any comments? Um, no, no. Uh, I think it, it looks really good. Um, and I, it's, it would look as good if it was slightly smaller, but I understand all the circumstances and that's fine. So um, uh, I'm good. But I, just, I just found out where Jasper O'Farrell first settled in this area, right behind where Osmosis spy is in, in Freestone. I just learned that like two weeks ago. Um, so the history of that name is certainly great and the bar is, is as well. So um, yeah, I think I approve it and I wish we could open the doors tomorrow. <laughs> and Chair Luthen, I just want to make sure, did we do, and I may have just missed it if I apologize, um, did we do public comment yet? I know there's no 
public here, but I just want to make sure we at least do that statement and recognize that before any votes. I'm sorry, thank you very much. We've got, uh, we've got ahead of ourselves here. Um, any public comment? I don't think anybody's on, but did we receive any public comment in writing? Uh, I did not, Alan. Did we receive any public comments on your end? I have not received a single comment on this project. Okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I echo the same comments. Um, I, I'm, I think it's a very handsome sign. I think it really is really on the building. I, I think uh, I, I agree that the, the A finding is something that's supported here. Really appreciate that it's using the color. Is, is nice and and I think part of why it, it looks appropriate even though it is physically large is the background kind of matches the building it really looks like uh, it almost looks like a set of letters on the building and uh, yeah I think I think Jasper O'Farrell was instrumental in the building of uh, St. Teresa's Church out today uh -huh. the contributors and um, helpers to build that place when it was originally built back in 1870 something Anyway, um, so somebody want to throw a motion on the table for approval? Sounds like we have consensus. I'll do that. I would like to uh, motion to approve the sign uh, based on exception A for Alan's report um, to approve it as is. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. All right, we have a motion on the table. Can we have a second? I will second it. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, I think we will call. Uh, Alan, okay. do you want to do the, the vote count or shall I? Um, sorry, sorry, let's do it. So, uh, I'll start with Christine. Aye. All right, uh, Lars. Aye. And. Uh, Ted? Aye. All right. So with that, it is motioned and approved as, sorry, and is it as conditioned or as? Or as? Um, and with your conditions that we found uh, finding, I believe, A. Perfect. To be appropriate. Okay. Sounds good. Right. So with that, the item is approved. All right. Thank you very much. I hope, uh, I hope you get back into business as soon as possible. Seeing you on the end, other end of this. And Damien, uh, just so you know, the um, the ABC does have a certain number of um, exemptions and things like that that they are waiving right now. If you go to their website, that may be of use. Uh, just so you're aware of um, some of the normal things like off sale that uh, they're allowing for on sale businesses to do that if you're able to. Yeah, we'll, we'll see about that drive through one of these days. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Take over the sidewalk, the, take over the parking lot there, yeah. Uh, you've got the little alley there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the bank's alley and the bank's parking lot, unfortunately. Although the property manager is very nice and, and we're on good. But I, I'll, in a future meeting, maybe I'll ask you how that works because I did read that there may be an exemption to go in a parking lot that you are near, even if it is the floor parking lot. So the round table parking lot, the old round table parking lot, for example, maybe is close enough, but mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll do it. It's really for, for us, we're more interested in if we are gonna, when we are allowed to reopen, what our limitations will be on both capacity, the people not being able to sit at the bar and having to have service. So we're looking at what our personnel needs. So we're just really waiting for so that we can open and advertise based upon that. And we haven't really got a lot of direction on, on what that is. And, and it could, it, it, whatever will change what our day-to-day -day business will be like, so. Um, right, and I will, I can share with you that I, you're not the first business owner I've talked to who has told me that. Um, and I have shared that with our city manager who is on a weekly call with uh, Dr. Mays and uh, on Thursdays, I believe, so tomorrow. And I believe he is gonna ask her if there's some way to get 
guidance. So, you know, because gyms and hair salons and others are also having the same issue of, hey, you know, I know I can't open yet, but what am I going to have to do so that I can when the time comes? Um, so hopefully there will be more. Um, and granted, this is new for, you know, the health department too. So <laughs> we're all figuring out together, but hopefully they're able to share more uh, guidance beforehand that we can share with you as well. Well, I don't know, but as just a general comment, I don't know what it's like for other people, but I think that our success and our ability to stay around is going to be based on our ability to work with our landlord and, and having them be flexible. In my case, there's, they're, they're, they're good and they have some care for, for community, yeah. but um, I think that's going to be largely the issue for a lot of businesses. Yeah. Because the right now is no one knows what that new value is and we know it wasn't what it was before and we don't know how long that price point will persist. So, you know. Um, have you talked to the, have you looked at the alley behind you that goes towards, you know, the hot monk? Um, I don't know if that's owned by the architect there or. No, it's, that's all owned by the bank. And oh, yeah, West America, yeah. Even, yeah. The, even that going, going to Burnett. Um, yeah in that section and actually there was an interesting thing where they were the city did require them to build something like that when they redid the building to put those tiles in oh. um, i i've been getting into it a little because i replaced <laughs> those those uh the ballast there to be removable because they weren't removable before which is a fire hazard which i thought was a little odd but yeah. so anyway we we got into sort of how that whole thing was and so it's out of my knowledge, but I believe that West America is putting together a large project to redo their property um, in the oh. next year or so. So, or it was was what the property manager had told me. So they basically said it'll be different and do whatever you want. It'll be different in a year. So I don't know if that plan has been put on hold, but um, oh. yeah. I can tell you that the the use of private parking, um, I because I I did have a question about that is uh, whether people could use you know from spillover to the frontage or what whatnot of an existing business and that's exactly the kind of flexibility if you know business owners are making arrangements and and want to be able to do that so um, well, if that is helpful to uh, you know we're interested about the square on a on a personal level I'm also the the owner of. Uh, Jim's Joy Bungalow, which is the very small oh. to go on the square. Um, so, you know, I mean, I would fantasize about being able to use my liquor license to do a something outside there, which is considerably safer in coordination with that business. Again, I'm not exactly sure what the structure is for that and how far that liquor license can move and all. Of right. <laughs> But the, the, the square seems like an ideal space for me if we're going to encourage outdoor gatherings because it's easier to maintain distance and so far all of those studies about lower transmission risks and all of all of those other things. So you have a good space in front of that that little restaurant before the plaza, right? There's that kind of giant sidewalk. Yeah, that'd be a great place to have outdoor seating. Yeah, I'm, and that's yeah. Yeah, I have a few tables out there just in front of our area, and we are able to maintain those things throughout the day. But I think more than anything, that would would be the issue is just making sure you know they were stored safely at night. But anywho, I'm I'm super into working with you guys to figure out something to do during this summer. I don't know if the summer series in the park got canceled. I assume it did, and I've sparked a concert series. Uh, uh yeah, I believe. Um... Jim, uh, Peace, the Peace Town concert shirt is your soon I believe uh, there was some news about that um, since obviously the larger gatherings aren't appropriate right now. Yeah. So anyway, I'd be interested in, in doing and in helping in some ways in the square, but we're trying to walk that same line where we'd like to do something and create space for people to do things and also not wanting to, you know, encourage uh, transmission of people gathering inappropriately. So I'm just not exactly sure where the line is all of that so uh, it's a fluid line yeah <laughs> i'd like to help without hurting um <laughs> yeah. thanks and i we may get in touch with you um no, offline but i appreciate the uh, discussion i yeah. didn't mean to sidetrack the meeting though yeah. <laughs> oh, no, that's good, good. I, I'm, uh, good to hear that. enjoy it um, all right thanks Jamie. i'm logging off now okay, okay. Mm -hmm. thank you All right. 
Um, let's see, we, we punted our minutes. That brings our design review portion of our meeting to an end. We do have minutes for a tree board meeting, right? Uh, that is correct. Okay. So we'll go ahead and adjourn the design review board um, and open the tree board meeting. And our only purpose here is minutes from May 20th. And uh, this is again, um, uh, Christine, if you uh, are not comfortable um, approving these, then we should bump these to the next meeting since you were not at that meeting. Uh, yes, and since I was not at that meeting, I think we should bump them. Okay, so we'll continue those to the That's date not. certain of the next meeting. <laughs> June 17th, thank you. That sounds like a plan. All right, then that uh, that brings our list of things to do today to a close, correct? I believe so. It sure right. does. And actually, if I can, um, after we close the meeting, I have a quick uh, just sort of query for you that isn't related to any of your business here, but okay. um, it's just about agenda management. Sounds good. Then uh, without any further delay, we will adjourn our meeting until the June 17th meeting. Next. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. All right. Thank you.